गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स आफ्टर द डिस्कशन ऑफ फोर्स द डेफिनेशन ऑफ न्यूक्लियस एंड द इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द न्यूक्लियस एंड आल्सो वी डिफाइन व्हाट इज द एटॉमिक मास एटॉमिक नंबर न्यूट्रॉन नंबर एंड आल्सो व्हाट इज द सिंबल ऑफ एलिमेंट केमिकल एलिमेंट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ द न्यूक्लियस ऑलरेडी वी डिस्कस अबाउट द आइसोटोप्स एंड आइसोबार we start our discussion from the isoton and isomer and after that we will also discuss about so what is the radius of the nucleus or how we estimate the radius of the nucleus and also what is the binding energy of nucleus and what is the binding energy per nucleon for a nucleus right okay already we discussed about the isotopes isotopes are the the atoms which have the atomic number z are same but the different atomic mass number a such atoms are known as the isotopes of each other and next is the isobar the atoms having the same atomic mass number a but different atomic number z and neutron number n these atoms are known as isobars of each other after that the third type of the atoms which is the isotons isoton that means the atom for which the neutron number capital n are same but atomic number z and atomic mass number a are different again the atoms having the neutron number same number of neutron in the nucleus are same but atomic number and atomic mass number z and a are different so these atoms are known as the isotons of each other for isoton n c but z and a different so these atoms are known as the isotons of each other for example hg right mercury 8198 atomic number Z is equal to 80 and atomic mass number A is equal to 198. But the neutron number A minus Z 198 minus 80 is equal to 198. The isoton of mercury H is Au gold 79 197. Atomic number Z is equal to 79. Atomic mass number A 197. Therefore, the number of neutron A minus Z is equal to 197 minus 79 is equal to 118. Therefore, in mercury G and gold, the number of neutron are same in spite of Z and A are different. Therefore, H G mercury and A U gold. Are the isoton of each other. A point to another definition. The atom for which the neutron number A same, but atomic number Z and atomic mass number A are different. These atoms are known as the isotons of each other. Clear? No. After that, isomer. The atoms for which Atomic number Z, atomic mass number A, and neutron number N are same. That means the Z, A, N are same, but the radioactive properties are different. These atoms are known as the isomer of each other. Now, the isomer isomer atoms, the atoms for which atomic number Z. atomic number atomic mass number a and number of neutron n are same but the radioactive properties are different are known as the isomer of each other as an example bromine 3580 has the isomer one is in its ground state and other is in metastable state that means when it is in excited state Are isomer. Bromine has the two isomer. 
One is in gout state and second is in excited state. Again, what is the ISO point? Keratone having the same atomic, uh, same number of neutrons, but the gel in A are different. Such atoms are known as the isotons of each other. Isomer, the atoms for which atomic number J, atomic mass number A, and neutron number A are seen. But the radioactive properties are different. Such atoms are known as isomers of each other. For example, bromine 3580 has the two isomers. One is in its gout state and second is in its metastable state. That means when in, in, in excited state. Clear this? So these are the different type of the atoms. Isotopes, isobar, isoton and isomer. Clear after that, how the radius of the nucleus is estimated? Already Rutherford and Rutherford suggested the radius of the nucleus from the scattering of the alpha particle experiment performed by the Geiger and Marston. Right? At that time, the radius of the nucleus is estimated approximate 10 is to minus 15 meters. So here in nucleus, how the radius of the nucleus is estimated? So from Rutherford's suggestion and Geiger and Marsden's experiment of the scattering of alpha particle from the gold foil, they estimate the size of the nucleus of the gold has to be less than 4 into 10 is to minus 14 meter. 4 into 10 is to minus 14 meter. Again, from Rutherford's suggestion and experiment of the scattering of the alpha particle from the gold point performed by the Geiger and Master. They estimate the size of the nucleus of the gold has to be less than 4 into 10 is to minus 14 meter. By performing the scattering experiment by fast electron instead of the alpha particles are projectiles the bombarded target made up of the various element. After that, the reverse of the experiment, scattering experiment is performed. Instead of the alpha particle, they take the fast electron. And the size of the nucleus or the radius of the nucleus is estimated. The size of the nucleus of the various element have been accurately measured by the following formula. Again, in the beginning, the Rutherford suggestion and also Geiger masters the scattering of the alpha particle from the gold point. They estimated the size of the radius of the nucleus is in is less than 4 to 10 is to minus 14 meter. After that, the, by performing the scattering experiment, by taking the fast electron instead of the alpha particles. For the various element, the size of the nuclei of the various, various element can be accurately measured by following formula R is equal to R0 A is to 1 by 3. A nucleus of mass number A has the radius R is equal to R0 A is to 1 from. A is the atomic mass number. Atomic mass number of the element. R0 is the constant, its value is 1.2 into 10 is to minus 15 meter. We know that 10 is to minus 15 meter is equal to 1 fm, 1 fermi. Therefore, 1.2 fermi is the value of constant R0. Right. The value of R0 is in the order of the range of nuclear forces. And R0 depends on the types of the projectile particles. In Geiger Masters experiment, the projectile particle is the alpha particle, but after that, the different physicists take or also estimate the size of the nucleus by considering the fast electron. 
to scale of the alpha particle. Therefore, the value of R0 is going to depend on the projectile particle. <coughs> Clear this? Okay. Again, a nucleus of mass number A has the radius given by the formula R is equal to R0 is to 1 third. A is the atomic mass number of element. R0 is the constant. Its value is 1.2 into 10 is 2 minus 15 meter, that means the 1.2 fm. Because we know that 1 Fermi is equal to 10 is 2 minus 15 meter. Keep in mind this equation, that is the most important for objective type question. MCQ question frequently asked from this, question, this equation. The value of R0 is in order of the range of nuclear forces. And R0 depends on the types of the projectile particle. Okay. Now, what is the volume of nucleus? Volume of the nucleus V is equal to 4 by 3 pi R cube. R is the radius of the nucleus. We substitute the value of radius R as R0 is to 1 third. Therefore, volume of the nucleus is equal to 4 by 3 pi into bracket R0 is to 1 third bracket is to 3. Therefore, 4 by 3 pi A R0 is to 3. 4 by 3 pi A R0 cube. Now listen here, 4 by 3 pi and R0 cube are the constant. A is the atomic mass number for the given element, that is also numerical value that is constant, R0 is the constant. Therefore, the volume of the nucleus is directly proportional to the atomic mass number of the element. And what is the density of the nucleus? Density is equal to mass per volume. Mass is equal to m into a. Right? <coughs> m into a upon 4 by 3 pi a r0 cube a cancel is equal to 3m upon 4 pi r0 cube. Okay. Therefore, the density of the nucleus rho is equal to 3m upon 4 pi r0 cube. Thus, density of the nucleus does not depend on atomic mass number a of the element. That is independent of the atomic mass number of the element. Now here, the mass of the nucleus, capital M is equal to small m into A. A is the number of nucleon, that means the number of proton and nucleon. Both has the mass is same, 1.67 into 10 is to minus 27, that is the mass. A is the number of nucleon plus proton. Nucleon plus proton. M is the mass of one nucleon. So, Ma is the mass of the nucleus. So, from this equation, density rho is equal to 3m upon 4 pi r0 cube. In this equation, A is not present, therefore the density of the nucleus is not depends on atomic mass number of the element. Now just to obtain the equation of density of the nucleus, rho is equal to 3 small m upon 4 pi r0 cube. This is the small m. Upon 4 pi r0 cube, it is substitute the value of m, 3 multiplied m. In atomic mass unit, 1.66 into 10 is to minus 27, uh, sorry, that is in case it, divided by 4 pi. 3.14 R0 1.2 into 10 is to minus 15 is to Q. It is simplified, we obtain 0 0.22945 into 10 is to 18. Therefore, 2.3 into 10 is to 17 KC per meter cube. This is the density of the nucleus. This is the density of the nucleus of various elements. Thus, the density of the nucleus is 2.3 into 10 is to 14 times depth of density of water. So, a nuclear is heavier than 
the border because the density of the nucleus is 2.3 kV to 40 times more than the density of water because the density of water is only 10 to 3 kV per meter cube. Why the density of nucleus is 2.3 into 10 to 70 kV per meter cube. So frequently this sentence is also asked in MCQ type question. The density of the nucleus is blank times then for the depth of the density of water 2.3 into 10 is to 17 or approximate 10 is to 17 times more than the density of water. Clear this? Okay. Again the equation of density rho is equal to 3m upon 4 pi r0 cube. And we substitute the value of m r0 and pi we get the density is 2.3 into 10 is to 17 kg per meter cube. Thus the density of nucleus is approximately 10 is to 40 times that of density of water. Okay. So this is the equation of radius of the nucleus for the size of the nucleus r is equal to r0 k is to 1 by 3 and also the relation between for the comparison of the density of the nucleus with the density of water. Now next is explain the mass defect of the nucleus and obtain the binding energy of the nucleus and binding energy per nucleon. So that is also most important for numerical Find the binding energy, binding energy per nucleon for deuterium and all. And what is the mass defect of deuterium? Right? Then explain the mass defect of the nucleus and obtain the equation of binding energy of the nucleus and binding energy per nucleon. Now we know that inside the nucleus, the positively charged proton and chargeless neutron are present. Right? That means the nucleus is made up of the neutrons and protons. Therefore, the mass of the nucleus is equal to the mass of its individual proton and neutrons. Okay? Because inside the nucleus, the proton and neutrons are present. That's the nucleus. Number of neutron, number of proton are present. Therefore, the total mass of the nucleus is the sum of mass of the neutron plus mass of the proton. But in present, the mass of the nucleus is always smaller than the mass of its constituent neutron and proton. Now just read here, the nucleus is made up of the proton and neutron. Thus, the mass of the nucleus is equal to the mass of its individual protons and neutrons. But in free state, the mass of the nucleus is always less than the mass of its constituent neutrons and protons. Both mass are not equal. That means the mass of the nucleus is not equal to the mass of its proton and mass of its For that purpose, we assume that the one element, suppose the mass of the nucleus Xjp is n. And the masses of the proton and neutron in free state are Fp and n. Therefore, the mass of the nucleus is less than Zfp plus nm. Where the n is the number of neutron is equal to a minus j. In free state, the mass of the nucleus is always less than the sum of mass of total mass of the proton and total mass of the neutron. What is the difference in these two that is known as the mass difference? The difference between the total mass of the constituent of the nucleus and the mass of the nucleus is known as the mass difference. Then the mass difference delta m is equal to Zmp plus in in it minus mass of the nucleus. 
that is known as the mass effect. It is very easy. Now, our initial point is that we know that the mass, uh, sorry, the nucleus is made up of nucleon centro. Right? Then, the mass of the nucleus is equal to the mass of its individual constituent, but the individual proton plus neutron. But there is no time. But in this day, the mass of the nucleus is always smaller than the mass of its constituent neutrons and protons. How? For that purpose, suppose the mass of the nucleus XJA is equivalent and passes of the proton and neutron in the free state are empty and empty. Here Z represents the number of proton. A represents the number of proton plus neutron. Therefore, the number of neutron is equal to A minus J. So according to this statement, mass of the nucleus is less than the sum of mass of total proton and mass of the total neutron. Mp is the mass of the one proton. Ma mass of the one neutron. In given element, number of proton are Z and number of neutron I. Therefore, that represents the total mass of the proton and that represents the total mass of the neutron. So that is the mass of its constituent proton and neutron. Then it's always get than the total mass of the neutron. The nucleus between total mass of constituent of nucleus and the mass of the nucleus is known as the mass defect. Therefore, mass defect is dm is equal to zmp plus nm minus m. So that is the equation of the mass defect. Okay. Now, from Einstein's mass energy relation. We know that the Einstein suggested that the mass can be converted into the energy and energy is converted into the mass. Right? Then the Einstein's mass is the equation. The equivalent energy that the M to C square is emitted to mass to take the time. So when the Z proton and M to turn are combined to form a nucleus at the time. The nucleus has mass is not equal to the sum of this, but there is a less. So energy equal to the corresponding to the mass effect, delta M into C square is emitted in the formation of nucleus. Now, combining Z proton in neutral, the nucleus is formed with reduced mass. And the energy equal to the delta M into C square will be released. When the Z proton and M neutron are combined to form the nucleus, at the time the nucleus is formed with the reduced mass. Its mass is less than the less than less by delta M. And energy corresponding to the mass defect delta M, energy delta M into C square is if the nucleus of mass M is separate into Z proton and N neutron, now opposite to that, instead of forming of a nuclear, it is separate the nucleus in proton and neutron. If the nucleus of mass M is separate into Z proton and N neutron, the total energy equal to the energy EV to those particles is required. That means the energy equal to binding energy in delta M into C square is equal. And this energy is known as the binding energy in the nucleus. Therefore, binding energy EV is equal to delta M into C square. Delta M into C square. So, as we combine the proton and neutron to form a nucleus, Nucleus is forming having the induced mass and energy corresponding to the mass defect 
the diabetes system is released when the nucleus is formed. Opposite to that, when the nucleus is separated into the J neuron and the N neuron, the total energy required equal to the delta M into C squared. And this energy required is known as the binding energy of the nucleus. And that is denoted by dB is equal to delta N into C squared. C is the velocity of light in vacuum. So C is equal to 3 to the least 8 meter per second. Meter per second. Okay. Now, if the binding energy EV is divided by the number of nucleons, by the number of nucleons, we obtain the binding energy per nucleon. The binding energy per nucleon. What is the nucleon? Nucleon is the total number of proton in neutron. Because the proton in neutron commonly known as the nucleon. Commonly known as the nucleon. Therefore, binding energy EV divided by the number of nucleon that is the capital N. So we obtain the binding energy per nucleon is obtained. Therefore, binding energy per nucleon EVN is equal to EV upon A is equal to EV upon S. The binding energy per nucleon is the measure of the stability of the nucleus. Again, the binding energy per nucleon is the measure of the stability of the nucleus. Again, again the binding energy EV is equal to the entire square that means the mass detected into square of velocity of light in vacuum. And if this binding energy is divided by the number of nucleon, we obtain the binding energy per nucleon that is denoted by EBN is equal to EB upon A. Binding energy per nucleon is the measure of the stability of the nucleus. Clear it? On the base of the binding energy per nucleon, the stability of the nucleus is discussed.